endochondral bone formation, H and D staining. This picture is taken from our internet website where you excellently can see the uh, bony collar. This is the bony collar forming first around the shaft of the bone. This is formed by desmal ossification, this territory. Inside you see here the newly formed bony spicules. This is the zone of mesenchymal invasion. Here in the upper territories, closer to the epiphysis, between the bony spicules, there you find a loose connective tissue that we call primitive bone marrow. Deeper down, closer to the diaphysis, between the bony spicules, you have a red bone marrow, marrow, but sometimes this red bone marrow cracks out from the gaps from between the bony spicules, and it is uh, giving a layer over the bony spicules. That's an artifact. It's difficult to keep this loose tissue within these cavities. Up here, you will see the hyaline cartilage, the different zones I will demonstrate with the scanned version of the slide. In this specimen, you also see the bony color here on the surface. On the external surface of the bony color, there you have the periosteum. On the external surface of the periosteum, there you have skeletal muscle. Closer to the diaphysis, between the, uh, the bony spicules, you have red bone marrow. And here next to the mesenchymal invasion zone, we have a, a primitive loose connective tissue, that's the primitive bone marrow. If we go up to the cartilaginous territory, then we have regions like here, where we have resting cartilage. So this is just normal cartilage cells scattered evenly in this region. As we uh, get closer to the zone of mesenchymal invasion, then the cells start to proliferate and they make longitudinal rows of isogenous groups. The, these uh, rows are formed in the direction of the bony growth. These isogenous groups get larger and larger, so this is the zone of the hypertrophy. Then finally, these hypertrophized uh, cells, they will degenerate the, uh, in the, uh, close to the zone of the mesenchymal invasion. The degenerated uh, cartilage cells uh, are picked up by the macrophages, by the chondroclasts. Uh, the zones cannot be exactly separated from each other, so it's a continuous transition from the resting cartilage through the proliferation, then the hypertrophy, and then you get to the degeneration. Uh, between the cartilaginous cells, there you have the ground substance, the intercellular substance of the hyaline cartilage, which gets more basophilic. If I go back to lower power, then you see that how much more basophilic it is here, because it uh, calcium is deposited in these regions. This calcified uh, 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 matrix of the, of the cartilage is remaining, and onto the surface of this cartilaginous matrix, the, uh, the osteoblasts will sit on. Like for example here, you have the osteoblasts here on the surface. So this is here the remnant of the cartilage, this bluish territory. These are here the osteoblasts. And the osteoblasts produce osteoid that gives this eosinophilic thin layer on the surface. It contains collagen fibers and they stain well with eosin. You may find also osteoclasts like here or in cap form above a bony spicule or here. These are here osteoclasts. This is an osteoclast here. As we proceed further down in the direction of the diaphysis, the eosinophilic osteoid material on the surface gets larger, and some of the cells of the osteoblasts will be embedded. These will become osteocytes. On the surface, then again, a new row of osteoblasts will be deposited, which will produce again a layer of osteoid. These are here also osteoblasts, and they get embedded, and that's how the bony spicules grow. This bone, what is formed here, this is woven bone, it will have to be replaced later 
by lamellar bone in the territory where we have uh, the red bone marrow. Occasionally, you will see large eosinophilic cells like these here. These are these cells are the megakaryocytes. You will learn about these in connection with the red bone marrow. This entire territory here is red bone marrow. The background structure of it is the reticular connective tissue that we have shown you previously with the connective tissue types. In the epiphysis, you see a region for the secondary ossification center. In the vicinity of this region, we so see also a layering of the cartilage cells. I will show you this now with higher magnification. So previously I showed that here are the resting cells and in the direction of the diaphysis, you have the proliferation and the hypertrophy. But here you have also the proliferation and the hypertrophy and the zone of degeneration here. So if we draw now the cartilaginous model of the bone, it would look like this. Right. And then the ossification that starts from the direction of the diaphysis, you have an ossification here. And there you have the mesen zone of the mesenchymal invasion. Then the secondary ossification center appears here, proceeds in all directions, but it will not reach the surface. So that will remain cartilage and it will not reach the, uh, the border of the primary uh, of the ossification originating from the primary ossification center. So this will be here bone. And in this territory up here, this, this will remain as the articular surface, hyaline cartilage. And this will be here, the growth plate. The growth will provide the longitudinal growth of the bone as long a person is growing up to the end of the teenage years. The growth in thickness, that's always possible until the end of the life and uh, uh, theoretically until the end of the life and it's happening under, from under the periosteum. So the bone can get thicker also in later ages. 